obesity continues to be an epidemic. More than two out of three Americans are overweight or obese. MSNBC's Mika Brzezinski wants to start a national conversation on the issue. Her new book is called Obsessed, America's Food Addiction and My Own. Mika Brzezinski joins us now. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. You have an obesity issue? No, I don't, <laughs> but I have some other issues, and uh, I think as a country we have a problem with obesity and our overall relationship with food. What is it? Uh, it's, I think, an addiction, and I think there's a growing uh, amount of science out there to prove that the sugar, salt, and fat that is engineered in a lot of the food that we eat uh, causes a lot of people to have a, re a reward in their brain, in the pleasure center of their brain that is far more, it's as intense as an addiction to alcohol or drugs, for example, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. And there are some experts that actually come forward and say, that's worth looking at or I'm already there. So, uh, and I think this is why we are having this conversation today. Mika, you talk a lot about, mor on Morning Joe with Joe Scarborough, about America's food addiction, the obesity crisis in America. But what you've done with this book is, is sort of say, I suffer from some of the same problems that people who are obese suffer from, an addiction to food. Why did you want to share that side of the story? Well, that seems like a stretch, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, and it actually was inspired by a conversation I had with one of my closest friends. Her name is Diane Smith, and she's an Emmy award-winning journalist. And over the course of our relationship of fifth, knowing each other 15 years, we shared everything. We, we talked about work, relationships. We even had a baby together because my husband Literally. was out of town. She <laughs> caught my baby. We. Yeah. We've gone everywhere, but we hadn't talked about the fact that she gained 100 pounds over the course of the time that I knew her. Diane says in the book that it was either the rudest conversation she's had with you or the kindest, because you basically called her out. You used the F word, you're fat, you used the O word, you're obese. Uh -huh. But you guys had a deal, you and mm -hmm. Diane, you lost, she gained. She How lost. much did she lose? How much did you gain? 75 pounds, Good for and her. she looks amazing, mm -hmm. um, and she feels amazing. Mm -hmm. And I've gained, I was 118, I'm 133, do the math. Um, <laughs> and the other part of the equation for me was to be okay with that. Yet you say, you're you're still not comfortable with your weight now. Right. Why? Uh, that's <laughs> yeah. a good question. It is because a very it, good question. It, it, it's ridiculous, isn't it? Yeah. It's it's embarrassing. Kind of. Um, well, look the way you do. Yeah. You're not comfortable with. Right. Yeah. I don't know. It's it's not healthy. You also point out in the book a lot of research, not just about how the food addiction, but also how women are judged on their weight, not only in our profession, but in other professions. Absolutely, and the message that was being sent to me for decades is when I was really skinny, opportunities came my way, and people told me I look like a model, and I can't believe you have two kids. How do you do it? You are amazing. It never was. You're such an intellect. Yeah. Okay? And uh, I actually had one vice president. I was looking for a job, interviewing for job she was like you don't you know you gotta lose some weight drink some water come back in six months I did that I came back in six months and I got hired if that is isn't a message that you sort of have to live under a certain tyranny to get somewhere in life and especially in this business I don't know what is and in order to break that we've got to talk about this yeah. I could only imagine that sitting next to Joe that he was enormous help <laughs> Except for these munchkins that he eats on every No, morning. no, Charlie, that's a very good point about Joe because he just said a couple of seconds ago when we were talking about that, when, you, when you're tired, your defenses go down, you become a wolverine. Oh. He tells a story about how you were you ate a meal for five people, that he turned around right. and looked at you when you were literally covered with salsa sauce. He, he, it sounded like raccoons were tearing up the... Tearing up the wrapping. Yes, that was. And that actually, sounds like support, doesn't it, Charlie? Yeah, thanks, so. makes so many no, Actually, it, you know, I was trying to explain to him because he's like, oh, please. You know, women are so resentful because you eat, you eat like a bird and it's easy for you. And I said, oh, it's oh, not. Oh, contrary. You have no idea. One day you'll see it because it'll just happen. Where does this come from for you? How did this start? Your father, then. Yeah. My father's very mother? fit, as you would know, when he creams you on the tennis Yes, of course. Um, <laughs> yeah. Every woman gets to this place, uh, whether it's on the thin end of the scale or the obese end of the scale, a different way. I had a yeah. wonderful family, a wonderful upbringing. There's no blaming anyone on this, but I do think the science that we look at in this book plays a role. Um, what we have in most of the food we eat, especially junk food, has played a role in my problem. Mika Brzezinski. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Great to have you here. And Mika 